So far, our definition of a sum of a collection of numbers applies only to adding a finite set of numbers. And now we're going to extend this definition to talk about what we mean by a sum of an infinite set of numbers. And we'll do this in much the same way as we extended our notion of the definite integral and a finite interval to an improper integral over an infinite interval. So let's look at some notation first. This sigma is the capital S in, in the Greek alphabet. It denotes sum in mathematics. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n, shown on the left, really means that we start with n equals 1. 1 over 2 to the 1 is 1 over 2. And we add that to 1 over 2 squared and 1 over 2 cubed. And we keep going with the 1 over 2 to the n's until we reach the upper bound, which is infinity, which means that there really isn't an upper bound. So we've expanded this sum on the right. It means 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed. And then we keep going with the 1 over 2 to the n's all the way to infinity and beyond. This infinite sum is called a series. Given such a series where the formula for the terms is just denoted as a subscript n here, we let sn denote the sum of the first n terms. So that would be a1 plus a2 plus etc. etc. and then we stop when we get to a n. So for example, S subscript 3 would be A1 plus A2 plus A3. S subscript 5 would be A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5, etc., uh, etc. Et now these SNs, these are the nth partial sums, and they're well defined because no matter what n is, no matter how large it is, we know how to add these first n numbers together. That's something we're well used to. These nth partial sums, each one is a number, and the sequence of nth partial sums is an infinite sequence. And we know how to cope with the sequence in the last section. It might be convergent or divergent. If this infinite sequence of partial sums converges and the limit as n goes to infinity, of the partial sums is S, capital S, then we say our series is convergent and its sum is equal to S. And otherwise we say our series is divergent. So a series converges or adds to some finite sum only if the sequence of partial sums converges to that finite sum. We're going to develop a lot of tests for convergence and divergence of a series. And to start with, we're just going to try to use the definition with a bit of brute force, just apply it as defined, and try to find the sequence of partial sums and figure out whether they converge or diverge. So if I'm trying to figure out whether the series, the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n, converges or diverges, then according to my definition, this converges only if the sequence of partial sums converges. And now in this section, I'm going to look at a geometric way to tell what this sequence of partial sums is. In the next video, we'll talk about a formula for the partial sums. But in this case, we can see geometrically what is going on. So the first partial sum for this series, S1, is just 1 half. And I can represent this geometrically as one half of the length of the interval from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. Now the second partial sum is one half plus one quarter. You can see that's represented here by this line. And the third partial sum is one half plus one quarter plus one eighth. And you can see this is represented here by this line. And you can see for each of these partial sums, the amount of the interval between 0 and 1 that remains is 1 over 2 to the n. So for the first partial sum, n equals 1, the rest of the interval has length 1 half. For the second partial sum, n equals 2, 
the remaining part of the integral has length 1 over 2 to the 2, which is 1 quarter. And for the third partial sum, n equals 3. 1 over 2 to the n is 1 over 8. And the remaining part of the interval has length 1 over 8. So we see that the nth partial sum here is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. By definition, this series converges if the limit of the sequence of partial sums exists and is finite. And we can see that this is the limit, as n goes to infinity, of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, which is 1. So we say this series converges to 1. Let's look at another series, the sum from 1 to infinity of just the numbers n themselves. So this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, etc., etc., etc. And our definition says that this series converges if the sequence of partial sums converges. Now the nth partial sum is 1 plus 2 plus 3, etc., etc., plus n. And we had a formula for this in calculus 1, was n times n plus 1 over 2. So Sn here is n times n plus 1 over 2. And our definition says that this series converges only if the limit as n goes to infinity of n times n plus 1 over 2 exists and is finite. So let's calculate that limit. We can replace the n by an x and we get a very nice function of x, and we can look at the limit as x goes to infinity of that rational function. The limit, of course, is the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared plus x over 2, which is infinity. So the sequence of partial sums does not converge, so therefore the series diverges.